Hi guys, welcome in. This is Half History. This is our first episode for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm excited to eat and stuff my face. Uh, I am Paola and this is Julio. Um, so just a quick run through on what we're going to do today. Uh, each of us is going to have our own separate topic. I'm going to talk about mine a little bit. And I'm going to be asking questions along the way, which is the half history part. Uh, It's kind of just trying to do a little pop quiz, see if we're up to date on our history, kind of. Well, this is more like fun history. Yeah, we're going to be hopefully integrating um, more stuff with the video, having maybe some visuals to go along with it, some multi-camera action in the future. Um, but right now we're just kind of starting it off with what we have and doing the best to, um, kind of start something and hopefully once we get into the swing of things, we'll be able to start our own, uh, another podcast where we'll just be kind of doing a little bit of more leisure, laid back topics, talking about things maybe on, um, different, um, trending things on the internet and um just casual casual, casual stuff talk. yeah just hanging out so look out for that mm-hmm. uh follow we'll um post all post all the links to our social medias hopefully we'll, we'll start getting more active on those things once we get into the swing of things so yeah all right we'll get into it uh should we kind of introduce our guests to our topics yeah, so uh, you're, I'm the guest? No, no, they're the guests. Oh, you're the guest. You're my partner, babe. This is, or, sorry, you're my uh, talk show pop partner. Yeah, so we're um, partner, co-host. Part, co-host, yes, exactly. I couldn't think of the word. But um, I'm just going to go first real quick. Uh, my topic is on torture methods. Historical torture methods. Probably no better than modern torture methods, because no torture is good torture. I have a touch of, of, uh, I think, if I still have it, yes, I have a modern-ish torture method. Do you, um, a modern, so do you have, um, kind of historically how the methods of torture evolved throughout the ages, or is it more just kind of like... No. Here's one, here's one, here's one. Yes. So it's going to be more kind of like here's one, here's a different one. But the way that I have it ordered is it just gets worse. Um, If you guys have a weak stomach, just FYI, some of these are going to be kind of gross or what I think is personally gross. Um, And I'm just going to be quizzing you real fast, asking you if you have heard of said torture method. And uh, just to give a quick what you think it is and then i will run through on what it is dang yep i don't know if i'm gonna be as into this because if we're getting all <laughs> gross like and i have a not that i have a weak stomach but i just have a strong sense of um like empathy and what it i can to imagine what it would be like like i've heard of some certain torture methods and it so there's some horrifying things out there oh yeah and i couldn't imagine some of the torturous things that people think of and um like the most painful things and hurt like slow torture methods and just like uh yeah so wow i mean we'll get into it hopefully we don't get too graphic and too horrifying um we were actually kind of planning to do this around halloween if i remember correctly but we've been having so many setbacks in our personal life and just kind of having um just cold feet and getting into the the whole swing of things so hopefully we can just get into it and get into more of a routine have fun have fun Mm -hmm. get it going create some good content some good times for for the uh for the world out there just put some some positive energy out into the universe that's what we're trying to do here and knowledge on scary torture methods scary torture methods Uh -uh. and yeah so Uh -uh. If the production quality, um, just to touch back on, you know, what we have going on, if the production quality isn't um, great, we're hoping to improve things and 
Um, another thing I want to do is get a green screen. Um, Oops, sorry. We'll um, just kind of fine tune the production as we go along. Sorry to cut you off there, but uh, yeah, let's get into the torture method. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you going to give a brief? Oh, wait, no. You're going to introduce it later, right? What? Your topic. Oh, um, yeah. So uh, just like briefly. Briefly, a topic I'm going to get into is going to be the um, Mayflower and the kind of the history of Thanksgiving. Mayflower, not like entirely um, related to Thanksgiving, but it is kind of the origins of the pilgrims and the holidays. So that was a topic I want to get into. I don't know if we're going to do one after the other or kind of break it into different episodes but look out for that um so yeah that was was one that i was going to get into as well this is another sorry another co-host this is patty she is our chihuahua we have another one named pepper she's jealous come here pips She's our, our chunky one. We got the dogs. Puppies. We got the fluffy one. We have the... um, Not so fluffy one. The more grumpy one. <laughs> Can you tell who it is? Yeah, she's grumpers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Shall we got a we, handful. Shall we get into it? Let's do it. All right. So, I just want to qu- give a quick shout out to Britannica.com thecollector.com all that's interesting.com thank you and good old wikipedia.com um i use a lot of these just to kind of do some quick research uh just putting it out there if you guys are ever studying uh these are always great websites uh and just a quick shout out to wikipedia um please donate if you can (laughs) all right so First off, keeping it light. Have you ever heard of Chinese execution vans? Execution vans, that sounds like something that is going to abduct you and steal you away, uh, put a bag over your head, kidnap you. Is it, is it an abduction type van? Ding, ding. Yes. All right. So, you got, you got it done pretty much. So, the execution van was also called a mobile execution unit it was developed by the government of the people's republic of china uh, and was first used in 1997 Uh, the prisoners strapped to a stretcher and executed inside the van the van allows death sentences to be carried out without moving the prisoner to an execution ground so it was quick convenient and no one would know they'd just be gone one day Hmm. which is really scary (laughs) to think about it would all happen in the van. Just so just kind of mm-hmm. like a drive through execution. Yeah, like what? a delivery murder unit. Nice. So was <laughs> it was it was it torture involved like explicitly or was it just kind of like a quick way to dispose of people and transport the body all yeah. in one process? Uh yeah, it was kind of more like convenient, quick, uh easy to dispose. I mean, you could just kill them in there uh and then <laughs> dump them. That sounds pretty awesome. Discre- oh my god. <laughs> well, I I mean in terms of like efficiency, I mean like <laughs> just execution oh, cause for... no i agree i agree it's honestly <laughs> it is smart if you're gonna have um a uh, totalitarian government that mm-hmm. seems like the way you would want to ex- execute people just exactly. kind of snatch them up no one knows uh how to build your own totalitarian unit or government yeah i mean <laughs> sh- sheesh uh the thing that was really convenient about the vans also is that it required less staffing uh, it only required about four people to assist with the injection uh, and our mobile as well. So they would have someone driving, just a couple people. Boop. So and it was even it. like kind of quick. They would inject you? Yes. Uh, the PRC states that the vans uh, are the most humane or are more humane than previous forms of execution. Uh, in 2004, Amnesty International predicted that the ex- execution rate in China would increase because of mobile capital punishment. However, the number of executions dropped steadily in the 2000s and significantly since 2007, when the Supreme People's Court regained the power to review all death sentences. 
Uh, human rights groups human rights groups have reported that China carries out the highest number of executions of any country. The I'm probably gonna butcher this. Dui Hua Foundation put the number at five thousand to six thousand for two thousand and seven, and two thousand four hundred for twenty thirteen. Um, and in 2019, Amnesty International reported that uh, mainland China executes more people than all other countries combined. Well, and these are probably like without trial executions, like you said, like the mobile fucking van executions. Mm-hmm. Um, just going to be casually swearing. So hopefully that I'm just going to try and cut down on that. Yeah, um, me but, too. Um, Did I swear? No, I did. Oh, okay. I just, I just threw the F word in there. <laughs> but, but that that makes sense to me because the fact that they have so many uh, so many people. Mm-hmm. They, China is like is one third of the world yeah. in, in their own. So it makes sense why they would kind of have more executions than, than all the rest combined. That is a good point. Um, do you want to take a guess how they would execute them before? Before? Yes. You will, you're talking about that's not injection? Uh, yeah, before 2004. So uh, the execution vans, well, they were first used in like 1997, but um, it wasn't as popular, I think. Hmm. I'm going to have to say hanging? No. Do you want to take another guess? shooting yes they would actually shoot them all right firing squad that seems like it would be um honestly the way to go yeah just like have a bunch of people shoot you hopefully you get at least one you know shot in the head exactly um yeah i mean if 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 i was going to be executed i i imagine firing squad or um yeah i haven't really given it too much thought geez but it sounds like that'd be the way to go yeah yeah rough buddy all right <laughs> let's move on moving on so that that seems like it, the in all in all the topic of the mobile execution vans is very kind of like quick and easy yes not too gruesome so that's pretty cool mm-hmm. um it was really convenient fast and easy um but now we're gonna go a little bit back uh i Okay. Um, so, second one. And I feel like I'm going to probably butcher this. Uh, it is Latin. It is Poena Cule. Poena Cule. Yes. P O E N A. And then Cule. C U L L E I. Or Cuye. E I. Cuye. E I. Is yes. French? Latin. Latin. Mm-hmm. Poena Cule. Yeah, it's probably about right if it's if it's latin yeah either way do you want to take a guess what am i guessing i'm sorry uh the torture method (laughs) i know it's in latin uh something about the um sticking something in your butt (laughs) (laughs) no but it does actually involve a sack a sack? <laughs> yes. What does that mean? A um, sack? Shall I get into it? All right. All Did right. They put you in a bag? Yes. Uh. Yes. So, under Roman law, or sorry, uh, Buena, I'm going to call it Cuye, uh, under Roman law was a type of death penalty imposed on a subject who had been found guilty of patricide. You know what patricide is? Killing your father. Is it? Hold on, I'm, I'm looking. The, yes, killing one's father. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> and Julio. And Julio, thank you. Um, the punishment consisted of being sewn up in a leather sack with an assortment of live animals. Mm. Uh, just a trigger warning if you guys love animals. Um probably skip ahead a little bit but (laughs) oh my gosh uh the live animals would consist of a dog a snake monkeys 
and a chicken or rooster, and then being thrown into water. So they would start scratching you, biting you, trying to get out. And it's a leather sack too, so. That sounds awful. Like mm-hmm. That's such a drastic jump. Mm-hmm. Like throwing you in a sack. Claustrophobia, first of all. Then um, animals trying to kill you. Or trying to get out, eat that's, you. Yeah. Then you can't even see. Drowning. It's like buried alive mm-hmm. and drowning. That, that, that I mean, <laughs> at least, I mean, okay, so at least it's going to be more or less kind of quick, right? If they throw you in water. I don't know, because you would probably float. A little bit, but the there's gonna it's gonna fill up with water eventually. Like, right, they're gonna scratch, and imagine if there's like a dog in there and like chickens, they're gonna be able to like scratch. I feel like I feel like if that was me, I'd be able to like escape. Be like, mm. like <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, I'd use I'd use the animals to my advantage. I'd be like, hey, like we all gotta get out of here. <laughs> It's going to be hard because you can't even see like, <laughs> all dark. anything. And uh, then on top of that, your concept of which way is up is going to be all messed up. Yeah, that's horrifying. Um, That's just the scary part. But let's put you to the test. See if, if you can survive getting sewn up in a sack. We'll throw one of these pups in there. Find a rooster. Maybe a wild snake. Jeez. Yeah. I'd hang out with the dogs in there. Not the, not the rooster or the snake. We don't. You don't got a choice. If you kill your father, that's so, what you're getting. So that's okay. So mm-hmm. that so getting into like the what are these used for? This is a punishment for if you kill your father. Patricide. Uh, do you want to get a little bit more into the history of it? Yeah. Or or what was the question? No, I I was like I I had um totally lost the connection of that, and it's it's good to um kind of touch back on that yes. that. This is kind of a punishment for something. It's not just a horrible thing that, you know, happened at, maybe at one point in time. It's, it's like this historically was even something used for something specific, like, mm-hmm. for, you know, killing your dad. Yeah. So, yeah, don't don't kill your dad. <laughs> don't kill your dad, guys. That sounds, that sounds absolutely horrible. I know. Issues. Issues. I understand that some parents are horrible, but I think the best way to go about it is to just cut all contact if you can with them. If they're that, I mean, yeah, if they're horrible, don't kill anybody. Just kind of leave. Please. When, whenever, you know, possible, find some sort of, you know, network. <laughs> Support network. Exactly. Um, but yeah, let me get into it a little bit more. Uh, the punishment may have varied widely in its frequency and precise form during the Roman period. Uh, for example, the earliest fully documented case is from uh, C.A. Or, or for, is from hold on, uh, 100 BC. Although scholars think the punishment may have developed about a century earlier, uh, inclusion of inclusion of live animals in the sack is only documented from early imperial times, and at the beginning only snakes were mentioned. Uh, at the time uh, of Emperor Hadrian, second uh, century AD. The most well-known for a uh, form of the punishment was documented. Did that come out weird, or, or should I say it? Again? I don't know if you want to take. I was, I, I was kind of, um, just kind of half paying attention because I'm hearing a buzzing in the yeah, I can hear it too. audio. So you maybe uh, we're gonna kind of take a break and kind of see what's going on there. We'll be right back, guys. All right, so took care of that buzzing back in action all right welcome um, back getting a little bit of um ho- i mean hopefully it sounds better um like i said we're gonna perfect the production at, at some point in time somewhere down the line so <laughs> right now we're doing what we can mm-hmm. thank you guys you Appreciate were you. you were describing more of the the history of yes why people would get tossed in a sack the yes. the gona faye Piona. Poena Cuye. Cuye? Yes. Um, I'm going to kind of start off from the last uh, paragraph just because I realized that it made no no freaking sense. Um, all right. Paraphrase. Paraphrasing. Um, the, early, the earliest fully documented case is from uh, 100 BC. 
although scholars think the punishment may have developed about a century earlier. Um, inclusions of live animals in the sack is only documented from early imperial times. Uh, and at the beginning, only snakes were mentioned. So they started getting creative after that. Early imperial. So, is, so we're talking about Latin. Is this like Roman Empire? We're talking about... Roman period, yeah. This has to be, if I'm guessing, like Romans. Emperor Hadrian. 2000 BC, right? Uh, 100 BC. Oh, I'm, I'm a little off. The earliest documented case, though, was 100 BC. The earliest document was 100 BC. So Romans... Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a little off. Yeah. Yikes. No, it's okay. This is why we're learning today. I, and I hope I have my facts pretty right. I don't know. There's so much in, like, history that I just mm-hmm. don't even freaking know what time is. I was trying to place the, the Romans in the context of the Egyptians, which I think is, like... 6,000 years ago? Just about. I'm not sure. 6,000 years ago? Mm. Hmm. So I was just kind of throwing a guess out there, but if we're talking about 100 BC, mm. I mean... It was uh, about a long time ago. You, yeah, you, I mean, shoot, yeah, I mean, <laughs> now. So either, anyway, either way, yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, it was Emperor Hadrian, uh, and he was the one that was the most well-known... Uh, At the time of Emperor Hadrian, the most well-known form of the punishment was documented, where a cock, whoa, a chicken, <laughs> hold on, wait a minute, I, I realize, um, just keep on moving, sorry, <laughs> don't let it sit there, just gosh, <laughs> do something with, a cock, a dog, a monkey, and a viper <laughs> were inserted in the monkey and a snake yes so i'm glad that you translated for the first description but um yes a monkey viper (laughs) rooster and uh a dog a dog Mm -hmm. wow that Um, sounds horrifying yes uh at the time of hadrian uh boena guye was made into an optional form of punishment for parasites the alternative was being thrown to the beasts in the arena do you know what the beasts are like lions and yes. bears just like fighting hand to hand lions tigers and bears that sounds all right yeah i mean compared to drowning with a snake and a rooster mm-hmm. and that was called uh damnatio ad bestias so damnation to the beasts do you think there was ever some like really really badass um roman guys who just destroyed bears and yes and lions with their absolutely hands. now these guys were were brutal back then um a lot of the times they were um taught at a really really early age how to fight you know like it was these kids that were getting put into the the schools on how to freaking murder people so you can imagine a lot of these guys probably had a lot of issues from from wars, from you know living a rough life back in the day if, if that was uh, something that they went through. Um, but yeah, it was a form of Roman capital, the damnatio ad best or damnatio ad bestias, or condemnation to the beasts, was a form of Roman capital punishment, which was uh, the second option where the condemned person was killed by wild animals, usually lions or other big cats. Peace. Yes. Um, But yeah, that was your other option if you didn't want to get thrown into a sock with a chicken, a snake, and a monkey or a dog. If I had a choice, it'd be me versus a cougar. (laughs) I mean, those are probably some of the most fierce animals to, to face up against, but... It's scary if you don't know where they are. Yeah. Like, if you're just kind of thrown into the arena and there's, like, obstacles, like, you're probably not going to see this guy. It's probably going to be hidden somewhere. Yeah. And you're like, wow. Like it's like Hunger you. Games style. Like yes. You're, I, I prefer, like, yeah, arena style. Mm-hmm. The thing, because, I mean, I, what I'm imagining is that it goes straight for the neck. You know, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, it just cuts out the uh, blood supply to the brain, you know, take it out real quick. But that's, you know, best case scenario. If we're mm-hmm. talking about death by beasts, mm-hmm. um, it's probably some horrific, uh, you know, beasts you can face. Yes. We're talking about just hand to hand. That's horrifying. Absolutely. Um, 
I don't know. I can imagine you could probably find some weapons, maybe. I don't know, though. I'm just going off of, like, Roman movies. The good old classics. But uh, it kind of died out. So, during the 3rd century AD, up to the accession of Emperor Constantine, uh, Boena Cuye fell out of use. Uh, Constantine revived it, however, now with only serpents to be added in the sack. <laughs> Well, over to well over two hundred years later, Emperor Justinian uh, reinstit reinstituted reinstituted sorry guys the punishment with the four animals and Boenacuye remained the st statutory penalty for patricides with Byzantine law for the next four hundred years. That's such a specific punishment for such a specific crime. I know, but back in the day, I feel like they were a lot more religious, and one of them is, you know, you got to respect your parents and everything yeah. they wish for, so this must have been, like, one of the worst sins you could commit. <laughs> Things probably also moved a lot slower back then, like, this probably didn't happen all the time, but oh, yeah. when it did, it was like, oh, like, yeah, everyone heard about it from, like, 200 years before and oh, after, yeah. it's like, everybody, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a historical thing, and obviously, you know, we're reading about it now because it was such, like, a... A mythical or like a historical yeah freaking punishment <laughs> do you want to know what it was replaced with <laughs> oh there was a replacement <laughs> yes yeah i imagine it was much more um you know progressive well it was only being it was only replaced with being burned alive boy <laughs> mm. uh, gained a revival of sorts in late medieval and early modern germany with <laughs> it. so it revival. came back yet again so with a vengeance i'm kidding but uh the late cases of being drowned in a sack along with live animals being documented from saxony in the first half of the 18th century wow mm -hmm. well all right <laughs> but that is it for a boenacuye cool how do you feel um well i mean that was, that was fine all right, you want to move on to the next one? Yeah. All right. So our next one is the wheel. The wheel. All right. So we're the talking about the wheel. That's wheel. gonna. They're gonna put you on a wheel and then throw knives at you, like uh, you're in a circus. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, that's what, that's what the wheel is. Well, no. Uh, you are right, though. There is a wheel involved, and you are strapped to it. However, this is a means of torture that is beyond excruciating. Would you like me to get into it? Sure. Sounds right. great. <laughs> uh, the wheel, also known as the execution wheel, uh, the breaking wheel, or Catherine wheel. Uh, Catherine wheel. Catherine wheel. Wow. Someone got really hurt by a girl named Catherine. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but this commonly used ruthless a ruthless contraption in the ancient world. Uh, it was reserved for public executions. Uh, there are variations on the practice, but generally the prisoner was tied to a large wooden spoked wheel. The goal was not to kill them, but... The goal was to severely mutilate them, with the executioner starting with breaking the legs, the leg bones, mm. uh, and then working their way up. They would do this via an iron bar uh, and beating the victim to near death, crushing all their bones and bludgeoning them. Uh, once finished, the now ghastly maimed prisoner would be repositioned on the wheel so that their heels came together at the back of their neck. So Scorpion? Yes, scorpion style. Uh, and then they were left that way to bleed to death. You said there wasn't the goal to kill them necessarily, but to mutilate them. To mutilate them and just make it as like excruciating and prolonged as possible. So they would bludgeon you near to death and then... Uh, they would literally put you scorpion style on it. And what I'm guessing would happen is all the blood would kind of rush rush up to your head. Hmm. And you would just die. I'm having a hard time even imagining it. Are they strapping it to you like where you're like out like this? Yes. 
Were you like a starfish? Mm -hmm. So they would work their way up. They would have you strapped that way. And then they would start from breaking your leg bones. And then they would work their way up. And um, once you were pretty much bludgeoned and maimed beyond recognition, uh, they would tie you. Uh, My guess is... Once finished, uh, position of the wheel so that the heels came together at the back of their neck. So their leg heels would be back here. So I'm guessing is uh, if you weren't able to do that before, well, now you could because your body's all soft. <laughs> all your bones are crushed. So it's a lot easier to, to, I guess, reposition your body so that your face would probably be face down and your legs would just kind of come back up here and then they would tie you down. I think I might also be at that point. Like they could tie you around an actual wheel, like a oh. smaller wheel. That's why I'm kind of confused as to like if they're if they're strapping you like a starfish to a giant like, you know, right? Like water wheel, am I like a like giant thing, or mm-hmm. if they're just kind of like breaking you while you're maybe restrained and tied, and then kind of tying you around a smaller kind of more like wagon wheel type of situation. I'm not sure, actually. I should probably look up a few pictures. Nah, that sounds horrible. I'll, maybe I'll Google it right now. Yeah. Should I keep going? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Uh, some of the real life examples of this was uh, in Europe, uh, punishment via the wheel had been documented in Austria, Britain, France, uh Germany, Rome, and the Indian subcontinent. Russia, Scotland, and Sweden. Hmm. Oh my god. Russia. So it was kind of... This was this would happen all over the place. Mm-hmm. I pulled up a picture right here, and it looks like it's kind of a small wheel. Maybe like about... It looks like it's... Uh, I don't know how to describe this. This maybe like four, four feet. Three, three or four feet... Um, you know, wheel like a big wagon wheel, mm-hmm. and um, they're oh God, <laughs> they're le- like, like it's they kind of look like a starfish, but their legs are like tied all in between the spokes. Like, imagine if um, I can't even imagine like how to describe like if you had uh, some sort of. So they're breaking these people's legs. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you had maybe we can link photos. Yeah, we'll probably YouTube. we'll probably put it up. I'm just also trying to find a way to describe it for um, if you're like an audio listener. Oh, oh, sorry guys, we want to be user friendly. Yeah, and then it's just fun, kind of fun to find analogies and uh, ways to describe. Imagine yeah. if you had like a like a like a freaking Woody. What I'm imagining is a Woody um from Toy Story doll. Oh, mm-hmm. He kind of has those cloth arms. Mm-hmm. They're all like if your arms were that malleable because they're broken, they they tie them in between these. Like the woven, spokes. woven around. Yeah, like into into um, like uh, if you if you imagine like a captain's wheel, like a from a ship boat. Right. But like big enough to put a body on it, and they have the body kind of laying on it, but around the the steering wheel part, their limbs are kind of woven through it, like around it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take your spot, but I feel like. That was a good analogy. Right. I was gonna say if you put like your raggedy and doll and just yes. kind of like strap the and you were and you were just trying to attach it to the wheel without any rope, you know? Mm-hmm. You you were attaching it, trying to wind the legs through the little spokes. That's kind mm-hmm. of what the only thing I can imagine. Um Ew. But then they also there are also tied to these. Uh it looks like a, a more kind of gruesome and horrific like crucifixion. Yes. You're not necessarily nailed to a cross you're bound into this kind of human pretzel tied to a a wheel so jesus take the wheel that looks absolutely horrifying yes so yeah it was getting used in a lot of places um but in 1348 a jewish man named bona or bana i'm not sure how to say it uh was tortured on the wheel for Guess how many days? Um, how many days mm-hmm. until he starved to death or like died from trauma? I would have to say, um, 
like four. Yeah, actually. Oh my god, you got it right. Uh, four days and four nights, and it's the longest known survival of a person via this punishment. Hmm. I'm gonna take a break right here. Just give us one second. Okay. All right. Welcome back. All right. We're learning by doing over here at mm -hmm. Half History. We just had a camera issue, so mm -hmm. if this one doesn't work for us, we might just have to maybe cut out the um, video portion of this um, broadcast, but we're learning by doing, and we're going to get things more prepared for the future once we get to the future. Thank you so. for sticking around, guys, if you have. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate yeah. yeah. You. Um, but yeah, should I get back into it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, the longest known punishment by uh, the wheel was four days. And it's the longest known survival uh, of a person via this torture method. Survival meaning they were... No, they died. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they died. They, they died. No one survived. Yeah, I mean, they they tried their hardest to live... Uh, but they still died. But yeah, they uh, they lived for about four days before perishing in a very torturous, torture, torturous way. So what you're saying is they lasted longer than Jesus. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> in a <laughs> yeah. So we'll just move on from that one. Do you think uh, that was his like personal goal? Like I just have to outlive Jesus. Probably. I'll be stronger. There's a Bob. There's a King of the Hill episode where Bobby outlasted his dad. It's kind of that's what that rem or his grandpa in the in the hole. That's what that reminds me of. That's so funny. But uh, in 2019, an archaeological ar archaeological finding in Milan uncovered a skeleton believed to have been tortured via this this device. It must have been hard for them to kind of like dust through all of them, find all the shattered bone pieces. I know, all the freaking destroyed Ooh. shattered bones. I can't imagine. But yeah, that is it for the wheel. Getting a little bit more... A little bit more gory. More gruesome. A little more gruesome. Nice. Um, it was pretty horrible to imagine. See, I'd rather, I'd rather get thrown in with the dogs, mm -hmm. if you're asking me. You know, give me a little doggy. Mm -hmm. Give me a little cock, a little rooster. <laughs> Keep me company in the sack. <laughs> right. In the sack. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the next one is a little bit short, but it is called the Gridiron. Gridiron Gang? Gridiron. I don't know what that is. That's, that was a movie with The Rock about some football players from um some sort of school or something you know <laughs> something some youth or program nothing. or something right well that is not the case in this one uh do you want to take a guess grid iron grid. um you're tied to something in this one as well mm -hmm. um it's a grid mm -hmm. made of iron mm -hmm. and you're strapped to it mm -hmm. yeah that's my thought. That's your thought? Yeah. Any any addition that you would like to add? Because you're pretty spot on, except for... <laughs> dissect the word a little bit more. Grid iron. Oh, you're cooked. Yes. They cook you. Ding, ding, ding. So, this one's a little bit short, but uh, I couldn't find too much on it. The grid iron was basically a grill uh, for roasting people. <laughs> uh. Uh, as one might expect, it looked like an iron grid. And was placed over a fire or uh, a fire or burning coals. So, depends how upset this person was. Uh, some people were even basted in oil first to ensure proper broiling. <laughs> but take heart, they weren't eaten afterward. Probably they were not. Not this. So this this was this was actually in Red Dead. I don't know if you Ooh. remember Red Dead Two, uh, one of the probably best game of all time. Um, it is. Um, one of the one of the campmates. Um, spoiler alert. Um, actually, I shouldn't. This is, I'll, I'll bleep out his name. Um, but there's a character who is um tortured in such a way. But luckily, this person lives. 
Uh, I'd be so traumatized. We'll saved in time. I'd never want to eat anything grilled again. I probably would, but that's so terrifying. Imagine like when something is grilled and like really tasty and like you're smelling it. But imagine after you're being like cooked alive, like you're going to have that same smell, but it's going to be you that's cooking. And then after, if you survive, when you smell that same like delicious, tasty smell, you're probably going to feel sick. I know. I mean, it has to smell a little bit different, right? Human, human. Ugh. I don't know. I mean, live think of like human? a roasted pig. Well, you're alive. Yeah. I mean, fresh. Uh. Mm-hmm. I can imagine you. It probably smells. Decomposed body smells worse than like a freshly cooked one. Like, imagine if you're cooking. A fresh body this is gonna get really gory but like imagine if you're cooking a live fresh like rabbit you know if you like take the hairs off and it's just like skin like you skin it and everything and you grill it it's gonna smell tasty and if they base you in oil before the thing that's probably gonna smell bad is your hair burning yeah but your flesh cooking is probably not gonna smell too bad you think or is that your own is that your own personal opinion that's my own personal opinion because i mean i i can't say that i disagree but it's horrifying to think about Mm -hmm. um that makes me think of an anecdote that i've heard you know vegetarian some vegetarian people shared that once they stop eating meat the smell of meat can be intoxicating or like not intoxicating but like horrifyingly like yeah repulsive yeah um so they don't Particularly, I've heard that about pig uh, pork meat. Yeah. That it smells bad when they cook it. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine that, that such an experience will have such, like, a horrifying, like, mm-hmm. ugh. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Ugh. It's so scary to think about. But, um, yeah, that is it for the gridiron. Ugh. It's kind of short and sweet. Cool. But uh, nasty. Not a very descriptive name. I was able to kind of figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the word. Uh, that's what I was saying. Like, you were getting it so well that I was kind of like, come on. You almost got it. Damn. But um, our next one, let's see if you're able to guess that one, is called Keel Hauling. Keel Hauled, that filthy landlubber sends him down to the depths below. Make that bastard walk the plank with a bottle of rum and a yo ho ho. Yo ho ho. Is that walking the plank? Oh well, there's a song called "Keel Hauled" by um, Ailstorm. It's a very uh, lively um, pirate metal tune. I feel like it would have been more metal if they they talked about what it actually is. <laughs> well, they might. That's just the chorus. Yeah. Um. Would it be okay if we take a quick break? Yeah, let's take it. Let's take a break before we I talk about be. the uh, pirate exactly. pirate torture. Yeah, we'll be right back. Thank you, guys. Yep. Ready? I'm ready. We're back. We're recording. All right. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. All right. So I was previously on keel hauling. Keel, that filthy lame lever. Yo ho ho. Um. <laughs> so what was your guess again? Well, the song in the song was they make that bastard walk the plank. Mm-hmm. So that was my first. That was my guess. Um, but if we're not talking about that, I have to imagine. Um, I know, I well, I know, I know of some pirate um, torture. There's the cat of nine tails, which is like a flog. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's. Um, uh, so let me think. The only other thing I can imagine if we're talking about pirate torture is they strap you to the cannon, and they um, blast that thing off a whole bunch. Rip you to shreds. Well, they just strap you to the cannon while it's firing, so mm-hmm. it's like it's Ooh. constantly like shaking around and oh. getting really hot. Oh, that's really uncomfortable. No, <laughs> it's not that. Uh, they did strap them down, though. That's a really good guess. That could be a torture method on its own. I think I think there's a name for that. Eesh, cannon balling. <laughs> but um, coming in at number six of brutal ways to die in the ancient world is the horrifying ordeal of keel hauling the term comes from the dutch word keel meaning 
to drag along the keel. Along the keel? Mm-hmm. Um, Take a walk, quick pause one second. Let me just get a focus on the camera. Did you pause it? No, nah, we're still recording. Oh. Hi, guys. Mm, 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 we can mm, cut mm, it out. Mm, it's just mm. going to be a quick edit. So we're talking about... Um, <clears throat> so describe again what the um, what the method is strapping someone to the keel. Yes, um, the term comes from the Dutch word keelhollen, meaning to drag along the keel, Dutch. which is precisely what this torture method did. Uh, the sailor was stripped naked, uh, tied, and suspended by a rope from the ship's mast. Mm. Do you know what the ship's mast is? Suspend, yeah, the, the giant, um, where the, the sail, where the sail is strapped to. No. Kind of, right? No. Well, is it, would, so would that be just like the, like the tall post? Oh, wait. Yeah, no, no, sorry, sorry. It, uh, they were, uh, suspended from, by a rope, uh, on the, sh- from the ship's mast, uh, with weights or chains attached to their legs. And then the rope was looped beneath the ship. And once the sailor was released, they were dragged under the keel. The keel of the ship is is uh, like the front end of the ship, like the part that goes underwater. I so think. they were tied to the mast. Mm-hmm. So they kind of do walk the plank, right? They're literally drowned while they're dragging underwater. Yes, uh, but it's not just drowning. Um, the fatality rate was pa- practically 100%. Uh, if the person did not drown, they suffered severe head trauma from repeatedly smacking against the keel, as well as deep lash- lacerations from the barnacles and other aquatic growth present on the hull. Uh. Yes. So if they survived and were hauled back on board, death would most likely still be a result from, from wound infections. Jeez. Yes. Uh, some real life examples was actually in Dutch. Uh, the um, we can put a picture up, maybe. What? Um, I was I just was trying to make sure the the levels were. Oh, sorry. Should I put it down a little bit? I mean, I don't know. I think you want to get a little bit closer to the mic a little bit. Oh, a little closer. Yeah, just I mean, just try and like if you're like, I think because the idea like if you're gonna turn. Try to like also get behind it so you're like talking over the mic. Okay. I just kind of feel like I'm already like talking kind of loud sometimes. Well, you, well, you, you should talk at your normal talking voice. Yeah, no, because, yeah, well, we can edit the levels. It's kind of hard because I have the headphones in, so it sounds a little bit more muffled. So sometimes I kind of feel like I'm like talking a little bit more softly. Do you want me to turn it, turn the levels off, or do you want me to turn? Turn it up a little bit so you can hear yourself more clearly. No, it was good how it was. Okay, that's actually nice. I like that one. Yeah, right here. I like that right there. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll put we'll put up pictures and stuff. Yeah. Um, hopefully, that's gonna be a little more. <laughs> oh, man, oh, my I editing think we skills. Could are probably just not. put like a the uh, the link to picture. We will like definitely at the least we'll put links. Yeah. Um, to kind of some some visual aids here yeah because it's kind of hard to describe without any visual aids i'm a very visual person right um but this uh it would basically be like uh the the real life example uh there's a picture out there on i believe it was um all that's interesting but i could double check later um and the picture basically depicts uh a surgeon of admiral van or admiral jan van ness strung up before he is dragged along the keel mm. uh the dutch were known to practice this between 1560 and 1853 jeez mm-hmm. uh another example of it happening in history was uh the english uh the english royal navy used this method in the 11th century uh, several 17th century English writers also recorded it on British naval ships. The Navy? Mm-hmm. That sounds awful. Like, mm-hmm. why? And it was for death. So mm-hmm. was it, like, for, like, mutiny? Or, like, um, 
Well, how would you like what for what would be people be punished in such a like horrible horrible death you know i'm not really sure what it was i mean pirates were pretty wild back in the day i feel like they had a, a certain set of rules but when it comes to the english royal navy in the 11th century it was probably like treason probably um betrayal or you know just uh if you get on someone's nerves the right. captain's nerves it is wrong place, wrong time. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I kind of wish I had a little bit more research about this. Jeez. Yeah. But um, trying my best here. Uh, the next recorded history was in uh, uh, was the Greeks. Uh, the 700 BC Rhodian Martrim, Maritime Code, uh, Lex Rhodia, outlines keel hauling as punishment for piracy. Punishment for piracy. Yes. So this was the Greeks. This was 700 BC. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So historically, is it, it's just kind of it, when um, boats were used for exploration mm -hmm. and like everything, this was just kind of a, a common way to put people to death. Yeah. Just dragging people under your boat. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I mean... I feel wow. like that would even be, like, the easiest way to dispose of the body because you would just be dragging them under. And um, essentially, they would either die from drowning uh, or getting cut up by the coral. And then that would also feed the marine life. And then they would kind of do all the dirty work, maybe. Or it would you could just probably cut them off and then they would sink and get eaten by wild, wild fishies. Mm -hmm. but yeah wild wild times what do you think about that one that's pretty horrifying mm -hmm. <laughs> number six right we're getting deeper um it just kind of gets more and more painful as it goes hmm. how are you feeling i mean i mean it's all good mm -hmm. shoot i mean the <laughs> there's some that i'm imagining that are like the drowning alive ones are pretty awful yeah. you know but like there's like i don't know if you're gonna get into this so i'm not trying to spoil anything but we're talking about um rats in a bucket you know that one yes are y'all gonna get into that one no i don't cool. think so so if you're not gonna talk about it just <laughs> there's one i think it's featured in like a game of thrones episode so shout out if you've game seen it in that show but they <laughs> put rats in a bucket put it on your tummy so that the rats can't get out of the bucket mm -hmm. um and then put hot coals on top of the metal bucket so that the rats have to burrow into you to Look survive up. yeah that, that that something like that that's horrifying so yeah it's i i thought about putting <laughs> sorry that to one put in that here. image into your heads there no not at all it's a uh co co no we're just adding that one on a little uh bonus a little bit of bonus there bonus there <laughs> um but I felt like that one would have been a little bit too easy for you. I remember you mentioning it, so I was like, no, I want to make this a little bit more more challenging. Sweet. Let's get creative here. You had me in mind. <laughs> but um, the next one we're going to do is uh, flaying. You know, take okay. a guess on what that one is. Flame? Flaying. Oh, flaying. F-L-A-Y-I-N-G. That's that's when they cut your, your skin off your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next torture method almost takes the top spot, uh, but it doesn't. It's just because of its sadistic modus operandi. Uh, oh flaying gosh. or skinning was perhaps the most painful of all ancient world execution methods because of its slow process. Uh, the victim was first stripped and their hands and feet bound to stop any movement. After this, the executioner would begin peeling away the individual's skin with the sharp blade, often starting with the head as this area would inflict the most suffering due to the victim still being conscious. So it would cut away at your face first. Wow. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of the um, the Dexter uh, villain. There's a guy who skins people alive. Ew. Call him the Skinner. Skinner. Leonard Skinner. Skinner. <laughs> but uh, 
In some instances, parts parts of the person's body were even boiled to make the skin softer and easier to remove. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Mm -hmm. They would boil. They would boil you. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing they would just put boiling water over your skin just to make it nice and tender. Yeesh. But uh, there were few ways one could die from flaying. Uh, shock, blood or fluid loss, um, hypothermia, or infection. Uh, the time of death could also be anywhere from a few hours to even a few days. Also, Although it was considered rare in medieval times, a flayed body was a message, an eloquent canvas on which the punitive... Uh, of the secular authority may be written so this was like a an example to the people like don't fuck with us yeah i mean that's pretty <laughs> it's pretty clear cut yeah, exactly <laughs> nice pun there clear cut but um some real life examples was um it was practiced by the syrians aztecs chinese and several medieval european people Peoples, sorry. Hmm. <laughs> One alleged case was of a female philosopher named Hypatia uh, of Alexandria who was flayed by a Christian mob with postherds. By a or mob? Or potsherds. Pot, potsherds? Potsherd? Potsherds. How do you spell it? P-O-T-S-H-E-R-D-S. Uh, yeah, that's, some, that's one of those old school words. I don't even know. Let me Google it. Potsherds. Define potsherds. We're looking up a Google of this word. A broken piece of ceramic material, especially one found on an archaeological site. Oh, so, like a pot shard. Yeah, pot shard. It's just like an old school word. word for it. Yeah, old school. But uh, yeah, that was flaying. Flay, filleting. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. There's. I think there's um, a weapon in Elden Ring called the Godskin Flayer. Oh. Or, or something. Or maybe it's a, maybe there's some, some other weapon called a Flayer. But yeah, that's I kind of knew you flay something, it's like, take the skin off. Yeah, like usually you would hear it like in filleting, like if you're cooking... Um, so you could kind of have that little hint, but, um, yeah, this is on, on humans. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Um. While they're alive. Yes. One of our next topics is Blood Eagle. What is the Blood Eagle? Mm -hmm. Man. Um. Hmm. <laughs> the, what it makes me think of, I have to go back to Dexter. Mm -hmm. Another... Uh, thing I mentioned before in this episode is it's got to be they like strap you all these things like torturers I feel like they have to restrain you in some way oh, yeah. right so there's no way that they're gonna torture you and let you be just like loose and free right but I feel like a lot of these involve being strapped to an object not mm -hmm. just like you know hands behind your back type yeah. of or like to a chair just like um it's too easy. you know GTA 5 style oh yeah no, like, I imagine... Classic break the kneecaps. <laughs> you know, uh, strap uh, jumper cables to your nipples. Oh, God. No. Nah, um, or getting, like, your fingernails pulled off. That's my biggest one. I was like... Eesh, bamboo. I'll spill all the beans if you say it. Bamboo under your fingernails. Ooh, I hate that one. I hate anything involving nails like that really grosses me out. Yeah, that's rough. Or, like, toothpicks. Pulling your teeth out. Ooh toothpicks under you oh not the i mean there's a dude that there's any number of things mm -hmm. that what's so another sidebar but we're talking about um like torture you mentioned that people can die from from uh shock mm -hmm. just it's crazy to me that just like such a you know horrifying um like trauma to your to your body can kill you just from mm -hmm. just from the shock of it mm -hmm. um you know, being open up to the world if someone's, like, cutting your skin off. Yeah. Or, like, yeah, just being pushed too much. Like, shit. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> you still haven't guessed what Blood Eagle is, right? Blood Eagle. You strap to 
like a cross type of thing and they make blood um, drip down and it looks like wings. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Um, I'll get into a little bit more, but um, the barbaric practice of the blood eagle is really gross. Uh, But it's highly debated on whether it actually happened or if it's just a literary invention. Um, either way, it's really disturbing to think about this actually happening and whoever like thought about it must have been really messed up, really mad or something. But um, it was first mentioned in, the, in late Skaldic poetry. Um, the victim would basically lie in a prone position and be kept alive as their back was sliced open. Uh, Their ribs were detached from their spine, and their lungs pulled through the opening to form a pair of bloody wings. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's hard to imagine one staying conscious long enough for this to be completed, but nevertheless, uh, if the Viking sagas are to be trusted, this technique was truly earned. It truly earned its spot in the most, like, in the the most brutal, painful, and outright terrifying ways to die. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, Take a quick pause right now. Yeah. Yes. All right. We uh, figured out that mysterious buzzing again. Hopefully. We're doing our best to, you know, get get the king signed (laughs) out. Yeah. But, um... That does sound like it would be one of the most horrifying ways to (laughs) freaking... Jeez. Yeah. Have your... You know, insides out is never a good time. Yeah. Um, but we're not at the last one. Uh, we have three more to go. But um, as for real life examples, there are no really reliable sources that verify the real practice of the blood eagle. Um, that said, though, the earliest account that this was like known about was in 867 AD when Ivar the Boneless, the son of Viking leader Ragnar, Lothbrok, hmm. damned Apella, Apeya, king of Northumbria, to the blood eagle for killing Ragnar via pit of live snakes. Hey. So this is mainly known in like literature. Um, who knows if if so? This was like a known thing back then, but there are no real documentation of this like happening. It's just more like theoretical, like theoretical written in like history or books like Mm -hmm. literature type of thing and the thing is it's like it's hard for someone to even imagine something like this you know so i feel like someone must have have seen this somewhere in history like there's there's so much that is lost in time Hmm. i'm not hoping i hope that this never really happened but i i also kind of think that this is a possibility damn yeah i mean i hope not yeah but um that is it for the blood eagle moving on to number three we have scaphism scaphism Mm -hmm. yeah Mm. nothing comes to mind nothing at all no 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 guess okay uh, scaphism was one of the worst and most painful skin crawling methods of torture. E. It was described by the Greeks as a punishment used by the Persians. And if they are to be believed, those Persians were insane. I'm taking like direct paragraphs from like these websites, so just FYI. It's described by the Greeks to be a punishment by the Persians. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of like a he said and then they said. Right. Just kind of like trailing off. But uh, if they are to be believed, those Persians were insane. Um, in this form of execution, the accused was trapped between two boats or in a hollowed out t- tree trunk and force fed milk and honey. Uh, that part doesn't sound too bad, but the milk and honey diet eventually caused horrible diarrhea which stayed within the wooden enclosure. Uh, The unfortunate condemned was smeared with more milk and honey and left out in the sun or near still water. 
uh, where bugs would be attracted to the muck and rot and sweetness. The person would inevitably die, either of dehydration, exposure, or bite and sting wounds. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, with Blood Eagle, uh, no tangible proof of scaphism exists, but also after more than two millennia, any human remains or evidence of torture would have been long destroyed. So there's um, no real way that we could we could tell if someone went through this because of decomposition. It's just not documented that it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, the first historical mention of scaphism was in the works of Greek Roman philosopher... Um, Excuse me. Uh, Plutarch. Plutarch? P-L-U-T-A-R-C-H. Plutarch. 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 Hmm. I feel like I'm butchering these people's names and, and torture methods, so I'm sorry. You also kind of dump it around different, like, areas, so it's there's different... Yeah. Like, all kinds of different names. Latin. We went to Dutch. All right, Persian. Persian. Greek. <laughs> hmm. But yes, that is it for scaphism. So you would basically be like in a wooden enclosure. I've heard barrels um, or hollowed out tree trunks. But you would basically be put in there and be fed um, uh, milk and honey, just a bunch of sweet stuff. It would give you diarrhea. Mm. You start pooping all over the place. Um, and then uh, they would smear you with uh, honey and put like milk in it so that disgusting smell would attract like all kinds of insects all kinds of wildlife uh and they would just come in and, and munch away at the the poop concoction that sounds horrifying the poop milk honey concoction yeah dude like um, you're already st sticky mm. and just gross and stingy <sighs> and just being eaten alive by insects yeah and um they were left out there for a few days, so you would either die of, like, freezing conditions. If you had any cuts or wounds, that would definitely get infected. Mm. Um, ugh, it's just so gross. Sometimes they would also be, like, still water. So you would just be submerged. Just bugs nearby? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You would also either die from dehydration, exposure, or bite and sting wounds. Mm. Mm -hmm. that sounds awful yeah but um yeah moving on number two um this is one of the more well-known ones it is called the brazen bull Braze, brazen bull bright brazen bull whatever i was trying to get fancy with it what's okay well, um yeah that's i mean that sounds like something more like um brazen mm -hmm. um but uh, you're inside a bowl, mm -hmm. wooden bowl, mm -hmm. or oh. iron bowl, mm -hmm. and um, they, they they light you up on fire and cook you. I'll give you that one. That one's close enough. Um, so the brazen bowl, or the, sorry, what'd you say? Brazen? brazen? Brazen. Okay, so I was right. The brazen bowl, also known as the, hey, no peeking. Well, I just was trying to see if it was the if it was like brazing, like you're brazing like cooking meat or brazen like it's B R A Z E N. Right, like very like um in your face or like out there like yeah. brazen like Well, it it was just a bronze bull. So, um it was also known as Sicilian bull or bull of Phalaris. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Could you hear that? <laughs> yeah. I'm a little gassy. Right. A little gaseous. We had um dinner recently or mm -hmm. whatever we had. Hot dog from Costco. Hot dog from Costco. And Costco pizza. And Costco pizza. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna make dinner later. Car Kirkland or bust. I love Costco. Shout out to Costco. Already, Torture methods. It's already heck a late. What time is it? We've been um it's ten. Five. Yeah, we've been we've been kind of wading through the technical issues that we've been encountering and just not our unpreparedness. So we're think, getting through it. Do you think we should film the second part tomorrow? Or yeah, we'll do we'll do this, the other part um, at a different time. Um, I think that's kind of going to be the um, format moving forward. Just mm. 
one topic at a time just because um, we're going to want to get more into it, even if we can't necessarily fill. Uh, we'll, we'll try and get enough information and, you know, um, what do you call preparedness to fill at least an hour of content. And then after that, be between, you know, to one, two, hopefully if we have enough time, we'll, we'll get make more long form content, mm -hmm. but, um, try to keep it about an hour or so for each video, each, uh, each podcast, each broadcast. <clears throat> so yeah, um, that's the goal here. And if you guys have any suggestions, any tips, like, please feel free to reach out. Let us know, um, anything that we might've gotten wrong. Please let us know. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. We'll build We're... up a network of, um, hopefully people uh, give some feedback mm -hmm. and reach out on social media. We're not the, uh, the smartest fish in the sea, but. Heck, we're swimming. Yeah, we're, do, <laughs> we're we're swimming. We're doing something. We're doing something. Um, trying to educate ourselves here and uh, educate the world along with us. So please, we're all ears if you guys have any suggestions. For sure. But uh, yes, do you know how to pronounce it? Brazen. Brazen. Yeah, Brazen. it's it. I was looking it up. It means either made of brass, literary or archaic uh, definition. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the inspiration here. But also it means bold or without shame. Oh, shame. But yeah, it was a torture method and execution device designed by ancient Greece. Um, according to Diodorus Siculus, Siculus, sorry, Diodorus Siculus, uh, recounting the story in Bibliotheca Historica, uh, Perilius or Perilus of Athens invented and proposed it to Phalaris. Mm. So there's a lot of names here. Um, basically, um, Phalaris, or sorry, Perilaus per of Athens invented and proposed it to Phalaris, the tyrant of Acragos, Sicily, as a new means of execution, executing criminals. Hmm. Uh, the bull was said to be hollow and made entirely out of bronze with a door on the side. Uh, according to legends, the brazen bull was designed in the form and size of an actual bull and had an acoustic apparatus that converted the screams into the sound of a bull, which is so scary. Like, imagine just hearing that all night. But, um... Mm -mm. the condemned were locked inside the device and fire was set under it hearing the metal or heating the metal until the person inside was roasted to death you told me about this one at some point i mm -hmm. think a while ago so yeah i, I had heard about this but that sounds horrifying mm -hmm. um some modern scholars questioned whether the brazen bull ever really existing existed attributing to reports of of the invention to early propaganda uh, the head of the bull was designed with a system of tubes and stops so that the prisoner's screams were converted into sounds like the bellowing of an infuriated bull. Phalaris is said to have commanded that the bull be designed such a way that its smoke rose in spicy clouds of incense. Mm. According to legend, when the bull was reopened after a body was charred, the victim's scorched bones then shone like jewels and were made into bracelets. Just because they were charred. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like black, like onyx? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I could imagine it's kind of nice if it's... I mean, it would be horrifying if a loved one or family member died that way. <laughs> but at least yeah. it could just be like, boop, I'm going to make some earrings out of this. It'll Eesh. be with me for the rest of my life. So morbid. I would carry you around. Yeah. If that happened. I'd be cool. I'd be glad to hang out with you still. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. I love you too. But um, stories allege after finishing construction on the execution device, Perilia, Perilaus said to, to Phalaris, his screams will come to you through the pipes as the tenderness, most pathetic, most melodious of bellowings. Oh, yeah, of bellowings. Perilia. Paralaus believed that he would receive a reward for his invention. Instead, Phalaris, who was disgusted with these words, ordered his 
horn sound system to be tested uh, by Paralaus himself, tricking him into getting into the bull when Paralaus entered. Or, sorry, tricking him into getting into the bull. When Paralaus entered, he was immediately locked in and the fire was set so that Phalaris could hear the sound of his scream, uh, his screams. Before Paralaus could die, Phalaris opened the door and took him away. After freeing him from the bull, Phalaris is said to have taken Paralaus to the top of a hill and thrown him off, killing him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phalaris himself is claimed to have been killed in the brazen bull when he was overthrown by uh, Telemachus, the ancestor of Theron. Wow. Mm-hmm. Where was this again? This was in... Literary arcade. Mm-hmm. Ancient that? Greece. Ancient Greece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Um, sounds... Yeah, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. It's horrifying. I know. It's really scary. I would, I'm happy to live in the time we live now, even mm-hmm. though we have our flaws this, this time, but never's going to be perfect. Yeah, at least we don't have to fear horrific torture. Yeah. I mean, you just got to be safe. Are there so are still sh- people that do horrible things <laughs> Right. There. I'm, I'm sure there's some people out there who have to fear horrific torture. Yeah. But, oh God. Uh, the Romans have been claimed to have used this torture device to kill some Christians, notably St. Eustace, who, according to Christian tradition, was roasted in a brazen bull with his wife and children by Emperor Hadrian. The same happened to St. Antipas, Bishop of Pergamon during the persecution of Emperor Domitian and the first martyr in Asian Minor in Asia Minor, who was roasted to death in a brazen bull in AD 92. Hmm. The device is claimed to have still been u- uh, in use two centuries later when another Christian, Pelagia of Tarsus, is said to have been burned in one in A.D. 287 by the Emperor Diocletian. Wow. Diocletian. Di- Diocletian. 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 Hey. Hey. What? All right. So, as it was, we, there's... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Our Hi. dogs are chewing on some stuff. Ah. Um, we're going to take care of that right now. I just want to know from you, um, Paola, yes. is this the last of the topics that we're going to be going uh, over? One more. So there's going to be one more. Don't sound too excited. I'm just con- concerned because the um, dog's chewing and we kind of run into time a little bit late here. I'm so but sorry. It's all good. I'm just um, excited. This is, I had everything like set up. I know. I'm excited too. Ready. I'm telling you, dude, I did not necessarily research, but I just did a bunch you're hell excited and looking into it once we get into once we just get more um experienced we'll have a a better idea for the timing Mm -hmm. of things so i even cut it down i was gonna do more (laughs) yeah no i i think um we'll we'll um figure out what the uh what we're looking for eventually thank you guys but um yeah that was the brazen bull all right um our brazen our first one number one in my opinion uh is called the roman candle i'm hearing buzzing again i'm so sorry guys Move this in. ah hey. figuring hey. out the solution yeah um, repeat that uh, the last part. Uh, coming in at number one is the Roman candle. Um, above all other brutal ways to die. Oh, sorry, the Roman candle. You got to take a guess. Uh, all right, Roman candle. So what? Um, Roman candle. You so uh, burning alive, some sort of torturous method of. Strapping. You pretty burn, much got it. Burn. Yes, I, was, I mean, how 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 many ways can you burn someone alive? Oh, you know? <laughs> well, actually, there's many different ways. But um, above all other brutal ways to die in ancient world is the Roman candle. 
whether it is the execution style itself or the executioner who ordered it, this is bone chilling on several fronts. Nice. Um, history is filled with ruth- ruthless and psychopathic figures, and the Roman ruler Nero is one of them. He hated Christians so much that he used them as human candles or torches for his garden parties. Hmm. Uh, First, the victims were tied and nailed to tall stakes. Then, flammable liquid liquid was poured over them before they were set alight. The fire started at the feet to prolong their suffering. Um, Whether the Christians had rebelled against the state or not, this was a monstrous way to go. It reflects on how barbaric punishments were in antiquity and how they were often born of man's vicious ego and thirst to dominate what he considered a lowlier populace oh, or sorry lowly no sorry i said it right <laughs> um hmm. so just so you guys know um nero was known for his execution method uh nero's torches if you guys look it up it's a picture or maybe we can kind of have it in in there yeah. Um, it depicts a scene where Christians, martyrs, are accused of being responsible for the great fire of Rome, and they are about to be burned alive. These candles further represent the first prosecutions against Christians under the Roman sovereignty. But that's pretty much it. You guys were bas- or they would basically be strapped to a stake and had like flammable liquid put on you. Jeez. And then they would start off from your feet up until you know you were up in flames but just the worst part about it was you would be basically like a display at a garden party like as you were dying and screaming along with your loved ones maybe people would just be that's like having a party having like drinks enjoying the view i mean hopefully not but that's something that i find like to be one of the most horrifying things about people the culture of humans in in um in history is Mm -hmm. just watching people die like Mm -hmm. the coliseum of people you know watching people get yeah like fighting uh, animals or watching people get hanged Mm -hmm. or you know burnings i mean like you could just see how creative people would get (laughs) with this and to display Mm -hmm. you know the, the cruelty so brazenly that's pretty pretty awful yeah but um yeah that is it that was number one <laughs> that was so you you were going um just to worse like i i, I kind of tried to to set it up so that it, they would be getting progressively worse and i do think that they did it's i think just, so too some of them are just brutal in their own specific way that it's kind of hard to put them in order All right like drowning alive and burning alive mm-hmm. has to be like the worst yeah buried alive Mm-mm. all those kind of just like yeah those, those ones gotta be the worst one of the one that always gives me like ooh, freaking chills is is like having salt put on your wound yeah like, i mean that's classic i know but that that's just like one of those things like i would probably put that in number one or something if if like i wasn't getting too gory with it because it's just I feel like it's also personally like some people can endure more things but you'd pretty much die in all of these i don't know but yeah that's how i set them up well all right (laughs) hope Um, it was uh bearable for you guys i'm sorry i kind of stuttered a lot but we're getting better hopefully yeah we're working we're um gonna be doing the putting in the the work to get better here so whether you're starting on day one um you know checking us out or you know coming back at a at a later time and seeing how far we've come Mm -hmm. Uh, we're glad to have you here check us out um we'll be a half history um you know everywhere half history (laughs) half history podcast or half history pod on uh twitter um you know shoot us an email half history pod at gmail.com and um you know reach out to us we'll be seeing you in the future and we're we're glad to have you happy to have you guys thank you so much uh happy thanksgiving to everyone uh if you do or don't celebrate it um i hope you're able to make memories yeah for sure happy holidays in in general yeah bye
Bye.